Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel everybody and this is going to be the first part of the Patriots offensive ebook that I'm going to be doing and I'm going to be breaking down two formations in this video because they really feed off each other and they are really really powerful but before that please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're interested to see the whole ebook I'm going to be doing on the Patriots offense it's all going to be free on YouTube I'm going to be breaking down obviously the two formations in this video which I'm going to get to Gun split close pads, I'm gonna break down, I'm gonna break down Y off trips pads, gun trips tight end, gun bunch a little bit, and also spread wide. These formations, they have everything you need to pass the ball in Madden 20. And also, one more disclaimer, if you want to see me run this offense in Weekend League tonight, make sure to go check out the link to my Twitch channel, it's gonna be in the description, I'm gonna be playing Weekend League with this new offense, it's gonna be the first time that I'm, that I'm gonna be using it in Weekend League. It's going to be really interesting if you guys are interested in seeing how you can use this scheme in game against actual people online because obviously this is offline and online is always a bit different. If you're interested in that, then make sure to go check that out. And yeah, let's get into it. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down single back ace close in combination with gun, uh, gun ace slot offset. These two formations are both really good. And they really, really work well together. We're gonna start by uh, by breaking down single back ace close. And before that, I'm gonna be breaking down which players I have on the field right now. I've created a custom roster for you guys on PlayStation. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section. And basically, I've traded. I've made it look like men ultimate team. I've got Tom Brady right here with hot rod master, 99 speed. Everything is 99 on this quarterback. The wide receivers I have Hopkins. All of the good receivers in the NFL, in the actual NFL. None of these stats are boosted. And if you're interested in seeing that, because this makes it more realistic as to where it is like a mud, it's like a mud roster basically. Let me know in the comment section and I will release that for you guys. So, just so you know that this is not the actual Seahawks, you'll you'll probably notice it as soon as I'm gonna be on the place, on the uh, actual field, just so you know. It's not the real roster. Now, audibles for single back ace close. Uh, ha halfback stretch. PA, PA stretch? No. We want to have halfbacks on weekend there. Y seam is good. And double cross is not really something that we want to have. We want PA stretch in there. Halfback stretch, halfbacks on weak. These two runs, they really feed off each other really well. Because both of them are really good. And... It makes your opponent it forces your opponent to respect the run, and then there are some nice, really, there are some really nice deep passes that you can then use. The main benefit from this formation, as I said, is that you can run the ball really effectively. Now I'm only going to show this one a couple of times because you don't really want me to uh, want to see me run stretch 20 times, just so you know that you can get a nice edge right there and get to the outside. Now Carson is not the best running back. But you see that the blocking set up really well. Same works uh, with the halfback zone. Weak. Make sure to hand it off to your quarterback. Strong side. That's a quick tip for you guys that I've noticed many people online don't know. If your quarterback is right-handed, he actually gets a faster hand of animation. If the run under center run this not, doesn't work for shotgun runs, but under center, if you're right-handed and the quarterback turns around and hands the ball off to the right, like in this case he would. No, in this case he would the animation is going to be quicker than if you were to hand it off to the left. Just know that if you are pay, if you pay attention to those kinds of things, they are going to help your game. Passing-wise, this formation is not that great. There are a couple of really, really, really good plays against cover 2 and cover 3. Cover 4 is kind of tough to beat because, yeah, it's not that passing heavy, so there are only a couple of ways to beat coverages. And this PA stretch is one. I'm going to show this to you against the Tampa 2 because this is designed to really toast cover two, and we'll show you how. The main thing that we want to do is we want to block the halfback because these long drawn up play actions, they really get you sacked a lot of the times. Then you're gonna streak the, t uh, the tight end on the uh, wide receiver that's on the corner outside. Then you're gonna try to get the protection down and then you can throw this corner out really easily. So you see that it, it has a very big shot, a very big chance of being a one play touchdown. The main thing with this is getting time. And there is one way to get outside of the pocket really easily because sometimes you have to get outside of the pocket to make that uh, to make that work. I'm gonna make all the same adjustments pretty much. And then I'm going to double team 
the second most uh, um, second most outside rusher, and then I'm going to ID the mic on him. Now, if I am going to run this play, you will see that he gets picked up by the running back. I can get outside of the pocket really easily, and yeah, it's basically a really really good laser. Now, one last thing that I want to mention for you guys is that if you're running this play, you can get sacked really easily because this is a deep shot. I would not use this play that often. If you want to pass the ball out of this set, I would recommend you to go into the, let's say, to go into the Gane Slot Offset Formation because passing out of this is a lot easier just so that your opponent cannot fully commit on stopping the run out of this. It is really important to have uh, simple coverage beaters just like this one. Gonna get the protection down, and yeah, Tom Brady gets sacked because even though he's got 99 speed, doesn't have a skateboarders, and he's not gonna get outside of the pocket that well. Now that we know how to attack cover two out of this, we're gonna show. I'm gonna show you how to attack cover three out of this, and the setup for this is really simple. One thing that I would do is I would audible into Y seam. You want the corner to be to the short side of the field. The good thing about uh, single back ace close is that you can flip the play without any receivers switching sides. So you see, I just flip the play, I'm gonna flip it back again. Easy. We want the corner out. Oops. Why oh, seem there you go. We want the corner out to go to the short side of the field. Very important, we want to have the tight end corner out to the short side of the field. Then what we are going to do is we're going to hitch the circle receiver for why this is important, I'm going to show this to you in a second. And then we want to put our uh, wide side receiver on a corner rod manually. Now, then we're just going to block Carson and I would personally put the wide tight end on a delay fade just so in case if nothing is open, you can still release the tight end on a fade and maybe can get a simple completion that way. But the main read for us is against cover three. It's going to be motioning out this corner out, motion snapping it, and then seeing if we can get that corner out, corner out open. That's the first read. And the second read then, because this corner out can be thrown really easily, and then the second read, okay, I'm gonna just gonna switch coverage, and the second read would then be the corner out on the right side. From the tight end that is a corner out that's not very ex that's not often covered because not many people expect it so you will see that we can get in this nice area it's not quite as open as the one I actually dropped that because Sherman is a beast in uh, regular teams um the corner out from the receiver is, is way better because it gets into a, a more open area in the field generally so that's the first read and if that's not open then you can obviously look uh look to hit either the hitch or the corner out, or if that does not work neither, release the tight end on a delay fade and throw it to him. That also works really well. Now that's all for single back as close. If your opponent has kind of figured out how to stop you a bit better, then you want to audible into, uh, into kind of a slot offset. And then we're gonna break down a couple of plays. First of all, I want to break down this PA bubble because just because it's that good. Basically, what you want to do is you want to read um, this player right here, Greenlaw. If he attacks the running back, then you're going to throw the bubble. And if he attacks the uh, screen like that, that was actually a bad read, then you throw the screen. Basically, a really simple read. The main... Nah, I have to audible all the time. Yeah, Pierre bubble. Very, very good run play. Inside zone out of this is really good just because you have so many blockers out there. So even if you... Don't even look at the bubble. This run is gonna pop very, very easily. And I would generally, rec generally recommend you to, to pretty much always hand off to the running back because the blocking is really good and the chance of throwing a pick if you make if you read the play wrongly, it's just quite high. So I wouldn't risk it if I were you, and I would pretty much always hand it off to the running back. So now that we're on the play call screen, I want to actually highlight to you the audibles that I would go with if, if I were you out of Gun Ace Offset. I would recommend you to use posts, PA bubble, levels Y sale, and PA post shot. Post is a very good all around play. PA bubble, like I just showed, has a good run, and the PA, uh, the PA, uh, the bubble can pop pre pretty easily for a lot of yards. Levels Y sale is really tough to guard because it detects many areas of the field. I'm going to get to that. And PA post shot. 
it does what it's designed to do. It really gives you a lot of opportunity to get deep passes down the field. But we're going to start with posts. The beautiful thing about posts is that you don't have to adjust a lot. The play is really good stock. If I just run it that way, the way it is right now, you will see that there are a lot of things open. I can throw the, uh, the route to the running back really easily. I can I can continue to read the play and decide to check down to the tight end and turn up for a couple of yards. It's basically just on you to read whoever is open. Because I can pretty much guarantee you, if you run the play like this, someone is going to be open. I can even hit this corner out right there. Really easy, you see. Against cover two, you obviously... I say obviously way too many times. Some, some of these things are not obvious. I'm very sorry. Um, you can then try to hit the post route over the top. Really simple throw. It looks good too. There are just so many good, good routes on this play. It doesn't even matter if you motion a little bit. What I would recommend you do is do a little motion like that on the circle receiver. Just to throw off your opponent a bit. And then you can still make the read. This play works really well. It's something that is very tough to guard if your opponent does not really know what he's doing. He's probably going to start sending blitzes. And if he's going to start sending blitzes, you can then throw the bubble and things like that nature. Now, aside from the stock play, which means that there are no adjustments, you can also block the tight end. The tight end route is, it can be really good, but it often gets guarded by just the stock cover three zone. So I would usually just block it if you want to adjust it a bit. And the angle route is still really tough to guard. It's going to be covered, going to have to be covered by a user pretty much. And then there are other things open. What I would recommend you to do is always try to look if that corner route from the circle receiver can get can get open. It gets open late usually, which is a tough throw to make because a lot of the times you don't have the time you need. But if you can get the time, it pretty much is always open against cloud flats. Cloud flats are pretty much the only thing that can guard it. If you have any other flat zone besides the cloud flat, it's going to get covered. So you see, as it's going to get open, you see how it got covered there, kind of. In that case, you would immediately read if you're, uh, if the cloud flat is dropping back like that. You would then immediately read, okay, it's dropping back, it's dropping back. I'm going to throw it to the tight end. That's going to work. One final tip that I would really give you, and it's, very, it's a very important tip because this can happen to beginning players. A lot where they think that they missed the read okay I'm just gonna check it down and if you throw it to the tight end too late on the triangle route you see how it's jumping down there that is a chance at a pick if your opponent is very is if your opponent is competent is he, and he's gonna click on that is a chance of being a pick so always be careful about it now the beauty of this tight end corner route, however and the post route from the square receiver is if I were to block everyone and I would maybe put Thomas on a drag route just as a decoy, if you now, uh, if I now get enough time, you will see that I can throw this corner out in a nice little pocket. It's not the most wide open cover three beater that is, but it beats cover three for one play touchdown. Just know that there are ways of beating cover three out of this play, and it's really, really good in my opinion. If, if Tom Brady doesn't miss that though, we're walking into the end zone. Now, before I leave you with posts, I want to show you something really neat that you can do that pretty much guarantees a first down. If you're ever in a situation like third and two, run this play and it's going to work. You're going to uh, curl the white tight end. You're going to hitch Thomas. You're going to put Hopkins on an out route. You're going to wheel the running back. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to let me see if I got the right coverage out there on the field. I got cloud flats. Usually people are going to play hard flats, so let's just play hard flats. Uh, if I now motion him in like that, you will see that either the curl route or the hit shot will be open. This, whichever is open, is going to have to be usered. And in the case that it does get usered, then you read to the running back side. So if I do the same thing again, I have hard flats out on the field, so I'm reading the flat zone. If he drops down to the uh, wheel route, I throw the corner out from the tight end behind it. And if the user shoots over to the side where the running back is going to be on the wheel and the tight end is running the corner route, if he's shooting to the right side, make sure to look either hitch or curl. Now, the thing is that you can't 
you can't predict uh, which of the whether the hitch is going to be open or whether the curl is going to be open. Just know that what it depends on what your opponent is adjusting. In this case, I have cloud flats out there, so the hitch is going to be open. If my opponent had hard flats out there, that would make every zone besides deep zones play a little bit more aggressively to the line of scrimmage. That would then make the curl open. Little things like that are very important to know. And this is a great play against short yardage. And a lot of people like to uncover three for short yard in short yardage situations. For whatever reason. Just seems that way. So now that I've shown you a couple of ways how to attack short, intermediate, now I want to show you some bombs. And especially against cover two. Cover two, if your opponent runs cover two against this, he's going to get cooked. So we're going to switch to cover two on the defensive side of the ball. Actually, I want to touch him a bit because... Else he would move, he would drop down. And we want to switch to the play PA post shot. What I would recommend you to do is I would get a tight end with the tight end apprentice chemistry. And I would get one receiver with the um style apprentice chemistry. Or I would get a hard run master quarterback for this entire Patriots offense. What I would then do is I would block the running back, put the tight end Hollister in this case on a delay fade, hitch circle. Put Kittle on a post. And now I, mean, I would motion snap Hopkins across like that. And I will show you how you can hit that, that porn rod, uh, that post rod turn corner rod, just like that in a nice little window. And that is really powerful. Now, that's not the only thing that would have been open on this play. Um, let's switch coverages. Cover two once again. Let's say that that corner gets user. No problem for us because we have. We have a laser. We have another laser. You know, motion Hopkins across. Just like that. Boom, easy. And now I'm going to show you how that corner out gets open. In the tight little in the nice little window right there. You see that both of these things get open against cover two, against a stock cover two. One your opponent can only use one of them. Either he's gonna use the corner out, which is probably the smart thing to do because that's a 30, that's a 50 yard completion. That can be a 50 yard completion, which then would mean that you have to post right from the tight end. Really tough to guard all of that. And yeah, let's go on to the next play. Now, since I've shown you a couple of ways to beat cover two, I want to beat, I want to show you one final way that you can beat cover three for one play touchdown. It's once again going to be out of this PA post shot play. We want to hitch the circle receiver, put Hollister on the delay fade, just because that's the thing. To, that's the smart thing to do. Block the running back, and if you're in an area where it's like first and ten, second and ten, second and twelve, somewhere around there, then you want to smart route the outside wide receiver and just run the play. This is gonna absolutely toast cover three, as you will see, just like that. Boom. Yeah, I timed it poorly. That was my bad, I timed it poorly. I'm gonna show it to you one more time. Slide down, please. Thank you. So, let's try that same thing again. Just like that. Smart rod. Almost forgot the smart rod. That's a very important part of this. And really make sure to get the timing down. You wanna throw it, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he, he just shed me right there. Um, I'll try it one more time until I will just say, trust me that it's going to work because I don't want to waste y'all guys' time. You will see that it's going to work. Basically, you want to wait until the uh, wide receiver is just about to pass him and then pass lead it all the way. Basically, like a one to two o'clock pass lead. That's what you want to go, what you want to go for. And finally, to show you the really, really most Annoying play to stop in my opinion in Madden. This levels why I say you can run it stock. I however prefer to streak my wide tight end. That's just me. And always take this flat rod. Not in that case because the zones match. So that was a bad read by me. But if I were to run this again. You can throw the corner out. You can throw. And then you can go back to the ins. All of you guys that have been playing Madden for a couple of years, you will at some point in your Madden career have faced someone who's running this scheme and boy is it annoying to stop because you still have to worry about those in routes and just alone the core route beats man coverage. You can always pretty much take, let's see, um, you can always take 
the running back route just like that, get a couple of yards. So it's really, really difficult to stop everything out of this play. And then not to mention he has to worry about you running posts or run one play touchdowns out of this PA post shot. Again, go check me out on Twitch if you want to see me run this offense on stream, on Weekend League. And I've played against some of you guys already. I want to play against more of you guys. So if you want to play me, now is your chance. Go check out my Twitch. And I'm playing against everyone. Not going to back down. Come at me. Yeah. Challenge me. This offense, it's really good. That's only the start. This is not even, these are not even the best passing formations. These are very, very, very run heavy schemes because the run of that is very, very, of, the, out of these formations is very powerful. If you're interested into more, in more pass heavy offenses, go watch my Gun Bunch ebook of the West Coast offense and stay tuned on this ebook because I'm going to be breaking down the better passing formations out of this ebook. Yeah. That's all I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If this video helped you, leave me a thumbs up and also a subscription. Click the red button, please. See you in the next video. Peace out.